of a question number three will come out, and I think it was at lap 95, uh, incident at turn two, this was just for debris, uh, Dylan Lupton and is the lucky dog, he was driving the 93 car on Saturday, and, Eric, and uh, Jeremy Clements, the 51 car, popped with another penalty, this time too fast on pit road, exiting uh, pit road. Ty Dillon would win the race off pit road and take the lead into the restart, which would be lap 102. Two laps past the halfway mark. Top three, lap 103. Ty Dillon, Justin Alger, and Kyle Busch. Kyle, Kyle Busch, however, would move into second place at lap 105, then back down to third at lap 106, then back into second at lap 107. Kyle Busch then moves to the lead, and he becomes the new leader at lap 109. Top three at lap 110 consisted of Kyle Busch, Ty Dillon, and Eric Jones. And, uh, and then at lap 120, it was Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, and Ty Dillon. Lap 130, Kyle Busch with a two-second lead over Eric Jones and a four-second lead over third place Ty Dillon. And at this point, it looked like Kyle Busch could have another Xfinity Series win, which of course is what happened. Round of green flag pit stops at lap 170. And then uh, lap 180, top three. Now you had Brett Keslowski, and actually he would move into first place at lap 179. However, he did not pit yet. So he had Brad Keselowski, Brandon Poole, and Kyle Busch rounding out the top three. The 22, the 48, and the 18. Kyle Busch quickly takes second. Still in the tail end of this round of green flag pit stops. Um, and then at lap 186, uh, Keselowski would go into pit for just fuel. No tires. But at this point, Kyle Busch would move in to take the lead. And by lap 187, you had Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, and Daniel Suarez again the top three. The three Musketeers, and um, get this, Kyle Busch with a 3.5 second lead over Eric Jones, who was running in second at 195, and his lead over third place Daniel Suarez was 11.3 seconds. Boy, they gotta be doing something to those Toyotas for them to buggy like that. <laughs> um, top five at lap 95, and this would start the last five laps. Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, Justin Aljay, and Chase Elliott. The 18, the 20, the 19, the 7, and the, the double 8. Uh, white flag flies at lap 199. The checkered flies at lap 200. Kyle Busch, your winner. Eric Jones finishes second. Daniel Suarez, third. Justin Aljai, your fourth. And Chase Elliott finishes fifth. Joe Gibbs' car is finishing in the top three for the second week in a row. And this is Kyle Busch's 77th Xfinity Series win. So on Sunday, it's IndyCar, which is a totally different beast from NASCAR, and um, I don't think you got the full, I'm not saying me personally, uh, just talking in general, uh, didn't get the full gist of how fast these cars were, because they were on a road course, but uh, that front stretch on the runway there at Winning Airport down in St. Petersburg, start finish line right there, but they were still booking like, like a 170, 180. Uh, now, IndyCar returns on April 2nd, and it's a Saturday night race at Phoenix, so that's the one to look out for right there. And in fact, that weekend, um, you have, uh, wait a minute, I gotta check the schedule here. But uh, yeah, so April 2nd is IndyCar, and uh, also April 2nd is the return of uh, Camping World Truck Series. So, you actually have trucks in the afternoon. Um, and then IndyCar at night, and then Sunday afternoon, which would be April 3rd, and that would be the STP 500 for Martinsville Speedway. And, then, and those who haven't watched a short track race, this is going to be a long one, easily four hours, and if you're uh, a veteran to the racing podcast, it's going to be a big one, because I could easily pump out 20 pages worth of notes just from that one race. This pack of notes from Sunday's race was only 7 pages, but at Martinsville, easily 20. And it's mostly cautions because, as again, they always, uh, it's a bumper car uh, 
a bumper car situation when you have short track racing. And if you are an NASCAR newbie, uh, I think the best short track racing event is the night race at Bristol. Love the night race at Bristol. And uh, speaking of night races, after that weekend at Martinsville, you have your first night race in, at Texas, which would be the weekend after uh, April 9th, and that's the Duck Commander 500. And this is the race I missed last year. I am not missing it this year, all right? <laughs> so just so everybody knows. So the uh, Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, 110 laps. Start time was 12.52 and then wrapped up at 3.05, 2 hours and 13 minutes. Simon Pagenaud, the 22 car, is the pole sitter. Top three at the start uh, was Simon Pagenaud, Hilo Castroneves, and Juan Pablo Montoya, the 22, the 3, and the 2. Um, the 14 car, Takamo Sato, he, he uh, loses it, goes into one of the turns. I think it was turn four. Uh, but he winds up pitting and coming back out. Nothing major, really. Top three, lap three. Simon Pagano, Helio Castroneves, and Juan Pablo Montoya still. Uh, Pagano with a 1.1 second lead over Castroneves at lap three. Then at lap ten, that lead would grow to 3.3 seconds over Castro Neves and a 3.8 over third place Juan Pablo Montoya. But then you get to lap 15 and things mix up a little bit. Pagano, Montoya, and Scott Dixon make the top three, 22 to 2 in the nine. Pagano with a five and a half second lead over Juan Pablo Montoya. And of course, Montoya, 2015 IndyCar, uh, Indy 500 winner. So we have a round of green, uh, pit stops at lap 20. All right. And then uh, after the pit stops, it's Pagano, Montoya, and Scott Dixon again. Although um, Carlos Munoz and Marcos Andretti would take second and third at lap 25 during the pit stops. But then after the pit stops, you have Pagano, Montoya, and Scott Dixon back in one in the top three. Top three at lap 40, still no change. Pagano's lead drops to a 1.5 over Juan Pablo Montoya and 4.3 over Scott Dixon. And then the first question will come out at lap 46. The 27 car of Marcus Andretti, he spins and stalls after getting contacted by the 28 car, which was driven by Ryan Hunter Ray. Uh, Pagano would win the race off pit road, followed by Montoya and Scott Dixon. And uh, the seven car, Mikhail Elishin, uh, he gets he has to restart in the rear. He gets popped for uh, pitting while pit road was closed. But then you had the top three at lap 41, still under question, which consisted of Connor Daly, Tony Kanaan, and Simon Pagano. That would be the 18, the 10, and the 22. But before this, Pagano had already led over 40 laps. Top five, lap 55, Connor Daly, Tony Kanaan, Simon Pagano, Juan Pablo Montoya and Scott Dixon. They would finally restart at lap 57, and uh, that was a long question, man. Uh, that was a little easy 10 laps. Uh, but then, question number two, still in the, the midst of lap 57, and I don't know what happened here. It was a really big wreck. It looked like a fender bender, uh, and you just saw a bunch of cars sitting there, and which consisted of eight cars in this one, and that was the, the 98 of Alexander Rossi, the 26 of Carlos Munoz, uh, Charlie Kimball, and uh, Jack Hawksworth, James Hancliffe, uh, Graham Rahal, and that would be the 83, the 41, the 5, and the 15. Also, Sebastian Bourdais and Oriol Servia, the 11 and the 12. And uh, big news was that a piece of carpet fell from their, someone's rooftop deck, right? Because he had those, those tall buildings there in St. Petersburg. And a uh, carpet fell and was sitting in a tree at turn seven. And this caused concern on Sunday. But they would restart finally at lap 64. Top five at lap 65. Juan Pablo Montoya, Connor Daly, uh, Simon Pagano, Scott Dixon, and Helio Castroneves down in fifth. Um, so, and this was a cool race, um, and I must admit, I'm kind of an IndyCar newbie, uh, I was like one of those people that's watched the Indy 500, um, you know, so this is gonna be my first year actually watching all the races for IndyCar, and, uh, I, I'm kind of pumped about it, too, you know, and, um, and it's really weird when you take notes for racing, because I kind of invented a new form of shorthand. <laughs> um, so, it, and it's really fun. I love it. I love it. Um, now, 
at lap 83, we have a new leader, which would be Ryan Hunter Ray, the 28 car. But then Juan Pablo Montoya would take the lead right back at lap 85. And this is when it looked like Montoya was going to seal the deal. Because at lap 90, we had Juan Pablo Montoya, Pajano, Castro Neves, Hunter Ray, Mikel Ellison rounding out the top five. Pablo Montoya with a 1.9 second lead over Pajano. By lap 100, that lead would grow to 4.3. And a 12.1 second lead over third place, Helio Castro Nueves. And uh, so the white flag would fly at lap 109. The checkered flag would fly at lap 110. And the winner, Pablo Montoya, Juan Pablo Montoya, Sara Pagano, Hunt, Ray, Ryan Hunter Ray, uh, Helio Castro Nueves, and finishing fifth was Mikel Ellison. And that would be the 2, the 22, the 28, the 3, and the 7. So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us what's coming up this weekend. And of course, NASCAR fans, uh, this weekend NASCAR heads to Fontana, California, out in the Golden State. I think they call it the Republic of California, but uh, I've never been to Cali. If I would, if I would just go to Cali, that would be it. The podcast center would move to Cali, <laughs> okay? So it's uh, the Auto Club Speedway, located, located at 9300 Cherry Avenue, Fontana, California, 92335, capacity 68,000, surface 2.0 mile asphalt, D shaped oval, four turns, 14 degree bankings at the corners, 11 degrees at the front stretch, and 3 degrees at the back stretch. There's also a sports car course, a motorcycle course, and a drag strip. So now, Racing Fans, the Racing Podcast pr- Full Throttle proudly presents this weekend's racing schedule. This weekend, okay, so this weekend, it's uh, Xfinity Series Racing, Saturday, March 19th at 4 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and MRN, and it's the TreatMyClot.com 300 by Jansen, and that is with 150 laps scheduled. Then Sunday, Sprint Cup event, Sunday, March 20th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox and MRN, it's the Auto Club 400, and that is with 200 laps scheduled. So, some two quick races this weekend. And then early Sunday morning, or late Saturday night, okay, the Formula One season opener, Sunday morning at the TV coverage starting at 12.30. The race starts at 1, and it's on NBCSN, and that's the Australian Grand Prix, and that's 58 laps, or 120 minutes, whichever comes first. All right, so here is Sprint Cup Series driver standings, starting with the top 10. Kevin Harvick in first place in the number 4 car, 154 points. Kyle Busch also, he's in second place, but he also has 54 points, so we could call that a tie for first. Third place is Jimmy Johnson, and he's with 140 points. Fourth place, Kurt Busch with 137. Fifth place, Carl Edwards with 136 Denny, uh, excuse me, Carl Edwards with 136. Sixth place is Denny Hamlin, and he's with 122. Seventh place, Joe Logano, the 22 car, 127 points. Austin Dillon in eighth place, he's with 122 points. Martin Truex Jr., he is in ninth place with 117, and Dale Jr. sits in tenth place with 115. From 11th to 15th place, in order... It's Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, Eric Almorola, Casey Kane, and Jamie McMurray. From 16th to 20th place, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Greg Biffle, and A.J. Almendinger. And then from 25th, excuse me, from uh, 21st through 225th place in order, Chase Elliott, Trevor Bain, Reagan Smith, Danica Patrick, and sitting 25th is Ryan Newman. Manufacturer standings for Sprint Cup Series. Chevrolet back on top 
with 166 points. Second place is Toyota with 162, and Ford is in third with 142. And again, uh, we're going to skip.